So a very, very good evening to our audience today. You know, really thank you for spending much, you know, you're spending your time this evening here with us. Uh, my name is Joshua. I'm from Philip Capital. Okay, I'm your host for today's episode of uh, Ask Me Anything webinar series uh, of uh, what to look out for when buying your travel insurance. Okay, so um, so we are all looking forward you know, to enjoying our trips and all excited about this. So um, we, we really do not wish for you know, unexpected and unfortunate events to both spoil our trips and of course not our wallets. Yeah. So today, we will be, uh, everything will be about what you want to know about travel insurance and you know, how they come in play. So today's session will purely be in educational in nature, uh, purely for sharing purposes. No, there will not be any uh, sales element in this session. So we hope to keep this session, you know, very lighthearted, casual, just like, you know, a few, chance, you know, few friends chatting around, chatting about, you know, about travels and all. So, uh, okay, I'm sure all of you have your questions. So really uh, plan your questions, just key them in in the Q&A session and we'll be targeting to end uh, the entire uh, webinar session within an hour, including the Q&A. Okay, and for the audience, uh, we are actually live, live on, live on uh, Facebook, Zoom, and YouTube. You know? so if you're watching us, please share with your other friends who you think you know will benefit from this uh, fireside chat, where you can you know ask all your questions and then you know really look out for what you know what are the things to look out for when getting your travel insurance. Yep. Okay, so how about how about the next thing I like to share with you guys? You know, uh, how about our like and share giveaway? Today, we'll be having a giveaway, a like and share giveaway. So for audience here tonight, just tonight, uh, so stay tuned, okay? You are in for a treat because we'll be give, uh, giving away to three lucky winners a $20 Starbucks gift card. Okay, so here's how to win. Take note, okay? Uh, we have key this in our chat, but then let me just reiterate this again. How to win. Like and share this Facebook Live video. Follow our page and comment LNS. Okay, on our Facebook live video, just comment. Okay, there will be three lucky winners to be selected. So do take part, okay? We will be doing the lucky spin at the end of the webinar. So do stay on until the end, okay? So it's quite good, right? This Starbucks voucher, you know, this Starbucks gift card, you know, you can enjoy your Starbucks drink while you're at the airport before your flight and all, yeah? So it's quite a good gift, okay? So tonight, uh, we have our speakers with us. We have uh, three very lovely speakers. So traditionally, uh, we will have a full panel of our Philip Capital members and advisors. But tonight, for the very, very first time, okay, here you can see our, panels, uh, our, our, our panel of speakers. For the very, very first time in our Ask Me Anything series, uh, we have an external, gift, uh, external guest speaker to, in to inject uh, maybe a different perspective, views on, uh, on the topics that we like to you know, talk about tonight. Okay, so uh, first off, our speakers, who, who do you have? Let me see, Ryan. Okay, Ryan, uh, Ryan is our, um, with Philip Capital, he's uh, our associate manager here. So maybe we can actually show a little bit bio data about Ryan. Okay, uh, Ryan is actually have uh, 20 years of valuable experience in this industry. So uh, his belief is actually active listening uh, approach for his clients, holistic planning, and always know to nurture strong client relationships. So some things that are actually not listed later, you can see in his uh, bio, uh, in his bio data, in his slides. Okay, uh, that Ryan is actually uh, with our Philip Investor Center at Hising, which offers a suite of retail and corporate uh, products and services such as uh, stockbroking, SME loans, financing, employee benefits program, you know, financial advisory products ranging from life, auto insurance, and even today travel insurance. Yep. So Ryan really has a great wealth of experience for us to tap on tonight. So let's. You no know, audience, let's tap on Ryan tonight. Okay, so Ryan, uh, why don't you say hi to our audience and maybe share a little bit more about uh about yourself with our audience tonight, Ryan? Thank you, thank you, Joshua. Thank you. Yeah. Hi everyone. Good evening. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Philip Capital for this opportunity to be invited uh to this webinar, and I've always believed that as a financial advisor, we can uh, impact people's lives. So advocating insurance and investments has always been my top priority. In my journey as a financial advisor, knowledge sharing with clients and friends has always been very exciting. And I do learn a lot from them too in return. So tonight, I'm really pleased to be here to share some important points when you are in the lookout for travel insurance. Thank you, Joshua. Welcome, welcome, Ryan. Okay, 
So uh, next up, maybe let's go for what? Um, okay, let's go for Ferlin. Ferlin is um, you know our associate manager with Philip Capital. So Ferlin has also been uh, having a very long run in this business with 14 years of experience. Uh, she's also a certified financial consultant and her belief is to constantly upgrade her knowledge to provide the best advice to her clients. So I'm sure that we are going to hear very good pointers from Ferlin tonight. And, and, and so one fun fact uh, to note for Ferlin, she was actually professionally trained as an occupational therapist as well. So maybe uh, Ferlin, let's have you to say hi and to share a little bit more about yourself. Hi everybody, thanks Joshua. Yeah, hello to everyone who is joining us live uh, this evening. Yeah, great to have you with us. Yeah, so like what Joshua have said, uh, I've been in the line for a pretty long time. So I guess I have my fair share of travel related claims experience that I hope that tonight I will be able to bring some insights yeah, to everyone. So yeah, so before I was a financial advisor, I was uh, trained in the healthcare sector. So because of that, uh, that, that actually uh, cemented my belief that insurance is actually a very, very important self-empowerment too. So, uh, and, 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 and that obviously also applies to, uh, to the topic that we are talking about tonight. So when we travel, there will bound to be unexpected disruptions or misshapes, and these will all lead to additional expenses. So when we have the right travel insurance, we will have the financial means to address them. Thank you, Feline. And thank now, you, thank you. And now, saving for the best for our last, our special external guest speaker for tonight, Clara. Okay, she's from AIG. With uh, 20 years of ex industry experience, uh, Clara definitely has great knowledge and insights which she can actually add value to, the, uh, to tonight's session with a different light and perspective. So I bring to you, Clara. So Clara, why don't you say hi and maybe share a little bit more about yourself. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Clara and I've been in the general insurance industry for the past eight years as a business development manager. Uh, before that, I was from a life insurer working in customer service department, uh, managing a team of executives in attending to customers' inquiries and complaints. Uh, I must say that I do have a uh, vast knowledge in the kind of insurance products that are available for the consumers in the life insurance market as well as the general insurance space. Uh, in today's topic, we will still be talking about travel insurance, which is definitely one of the most essential products in general insurance. Uh, it might not be mandatory like moto or made insurance. However, I'm sure in everyone's heart today, especially after COVID being in the endemic stage, we know that we definitely cannot leave the country without purchasing one. Okay, so uh, let's hear more on what we can share in terms of tips, in terms of travel insurance. Yeah, back to Joshua. Thank you, Clara, and thank you to our three speakers for tonight. Okay, so we have a well, well range, a well a variety of uh, you know speakers for tonight. So maybe why don't we kick start this um tonight session with a little poll? Okay, we will flash a poll out, and then if you're on Facebook on YouTube, you can actually uh comment in the chat box your answers. Okay, if you're on Zoom, you know just click your answers. Okay, uh, we will spend uh. One or one or maybe two minutes to get to you know uh, your your answers because tonight we would like to understand the audience here tonight. Okay, what do you think, or do you think that you know uh it's important to get travel insurance? So you know for those on uh, Zoom, just click in your answers. For those on Facebook and YouTube, you can actually just comment. Okay, okay. So we we'll, while we wait for your poll, we we'll wait for the poll. Right, what do you think? What do you think the audience will answer? Definitely, for all that are here listening to us right now today, I'm sure they are in to, to vote that is very important to get. <laughs> will you get a surprise no? <laughs> just to prove him wrong. <laughs> just to prove him, yeah, maybe just to prove him wrong. <laughs> okay, yeah. no, you've got supporters. Okay, okay, we see. <laughs> okay, we'll wait for uh, a little while more while uh, more audience can actually uh, cast their, their views on this, yeah. Okay, I think we are about done, yeah? So maybe can we show the results? Are we going to get the... Uh, are, we, are we showing the results? Let me see. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I think the results is out now, right? The yeah. results are out, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 80 uh, percent. So we didn't prove right wrong. Okay, so... Right is right, okay? Uh, most or uh, 90% of our, you know, viewers here tonight actually uh, poll yes. And uh, we have some polling not sure. Of course, okay. No worries. So you know, um, 
Ryan, uh, since you actually made a guess and you guessed it right, you know, we have heard, we have heard from our audience tonight, but uh, can we actually hear from your perspective, you know, as a person who travels, you know, as a, also as a very experienced advisor, right? Why do you think that we actually really need to get a travel insurance, you know? Yeah, that's a, that's a simple and very interesting one that you have mentioned, actually, to start yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, to safeguard, that's, that's the most important, to safeguard against unforeseen circumstances. You know, in life, it's always unpredictable. Yeah. Likewise, even when we travel, it's the same. So travel insurance is a must-have in your travel plans. It gives you that peace of mind when you, in the event of unforeseen circumstances, which result in any possible and sudden loss before, during, and even after your overseas trip. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your... Uh, perspective and view. So, you know, do, do you think that uh, we can have uh, for you to share a little bit about your thoughts? Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, well, for me, right, travel insurance, whenever I think of it, the first thing that comes into my mind is that image of a safety net. Yeah, because you see, like when we are traveling, if let's say we meet with a terrible road traffic accident, like a freak accident, by a by a by a tuk tuk visit, yeah, long time never go Bangkok already. I think oh, it's called yeah, tuk -tuk. I miss that. yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or say for example, an earthquake, tsunami. These are all not unheard of. Or even just very simple and basic things like our baggage gets delayed or misplaced by the airline. So uh, these were all actually uh lead to us having to incur high medical expenses and even having to spend uh, more money to buy new clothes or new luggage. Yeah, so a travel insurance will be able to take care of, uh, of this kind of uh, unfortunate hiccups. And uh, furthermore, right, uh, for, uh, for, for people who actually has got their own personal uh, accident policies, they will actually be surprised to know that most of the personal accident policies don't have any coverage for medical evacuation and repatriation. And this service actually costs a lot of money yeah, in order to repatriate a person uh, back to, say, for example, Singapore. And we are talking about uh, in the amount of like half a million to a million dollars. Yeah, and only a travel insurance uh, will, only, uh, will actually be able to provide that kind of coverage. So for that reason, right, a travel insurance is very, very crucial to plug this particular gap. Thank you, Feline. Thank you for sharing uh, so much in details. You know, why do we really need to get a travel insurance <laughs> and uh, maybe your favorite place to go to? <laughs> okay, okay, we got that. Uh, how about Clara? Uh, in, in your point of view, uh, how, how, about, how about yourself? Uh, I mean, I definitely agree with Feline and Ryan. I mean, it's definitely worth to invest for peace of mind. Uh, it protects you even when before the trip commences and provides you with like maximum protection even when you're overseas. So, I mean, just to quote some example, like maybe due to some unforeseen and serious circumstances, let's say uh, your relative or your travel companion suffered from serious illnesses and you might probably need to cancel or even postpone a trip which you probably have already paid for. So, um, this is actually one of the coverage of insurance, travel insurance, which is trip cancellation, or even during a trip, example, if let's say uh, you met with a car accident, okay, while crossing the road, or even your bag was being snatched or pickpocketed during while shopping, you know, so with a uh, good travel insurance, right, you definitely be able to get a good advice on medical perspective, as well as to get reimbursed now for the unexpected monetary losses, which you, you do not want in the first place, definitely. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. So thank you for shedding light on this. Uh no, I, I, I think I hear you, you know, uh we can actually get ourselves covered pre during uh, uh the, the trip as well. So I think that's a very good insight as well. So you know, so we have heard about why we need to get uh travel insurance. So here comes the next question. Uh. So when so what no we, we need to get travel insurance. So what are the common concerns, right, when it comes to selecting or getting the travel insurance, you know, especially you know, right now when the borders are opening up, you know, there's so much pent up desire for our audience here to travel, right? So, what are the things that our lovely audience here should be concerned about when they want to get the travel insurance? Maybe I can go first on this. Yeah, well, you go first so, or ladies first tonight. Okay, can. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, I guess um the current topic that is still uh you know hot and high up on everybody's mind is definitely still COVID. Yeah, even though not as much cases as before. Yeah, so uh the, the key concern is definitely does this travel insurance cover COVID? Yeah, so uh, I like to say that most travel insurance today in the market they would have or they would have added COVID related travel benefits in their policy. 
But having said so, right, uh, each policy's uh, COVID benefits will differ from one insurer to another. Yeah, so for that reason, it's very important that before you purchase the plan, uh, read the policy wordings very carefully to make sure that the COVID terms and conditions, it's relevant to your situation. Just to give you an example, uh, like say for example, lately I hear from one client that uh, in order to purchase a particular company's travel insurance uh, for the COVID benefits, they actually need the person to buy the plan seven days before the trip. Yeah, so, uh, so, so and that's why for that reason, it's important to read the wordings to make sure that it is relevant to your situation. And other than that, obviously, premium and the type of activities that you will be doing during the trip, uh, whether or not the plan covers or they don't cover it, this will usually be the next few uh, more common concerns as well. Thank you, thank you. I think you have pointed out a very important point, like policy wordings, because I think company to company, they have different policies and all. So we can't assume, you know, when we actually, you know, get one that every, everyone is the same. Um, exactly. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, how about, Ryan, how about yourself? Uh, no, what, 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 are the, what, are, what are you think are the common concerns for our audience here, you know, when they want to actually get, when it comes to, you know, getting travel insurance? Right, right. I absolutely agree with what Ferlin has mentioned, actually. We are, we are all living in COVID times. It has been over two years and we are all learning to adapt to this new norm, right? So since last year, when the travel situation has much improved, uh, the most common and frequent question I get is like, does it cover COVID when I buy this travel insurance? Yeah. So while most insurers do cover COVID, like what Ferlin mentioned, it's really important to us understand the extent of their COVID cover. Yeah. So for example, if your travel companion is down with COVID, are you able to make claims for the extension of your holidays? Because you may need to be quarantined as well. Okay. So other common concerns will always be like premiums. While we know that cheap may never be good, but that doesn't mean that we need to pay a lot of money for, for the best travel insurance out there. Yeah. My, my analogy about this is like drink driving. So when you can afford to drink, you will want to avoid driving and will definitely opt for valet services, private hire vehicle, taxis to bring home safely. Likewise, as much as you want, you want to enjoy your traveling, you like to have the peace of mind with a good and reliable travel insurance that suits your travel needs. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Very good analogy. Yeah, uh, but I don't do that. Yeah. So yes, uh, we don't drink and drive. Yeah. Good analogy, you know, to enjoy your, the trip that you planned for for so long, you spend so much money, this will actually give you a peace of mind to really enjoy the trip thoroughly and then not to think what if this, what if that as well. So thank you for sharing uh, a little bit more, no, uh, some different details as, uh, you know, as what Feline shared to add on what Feline shared. So uh, Clara, how about yourself? I think uh, just to kind of sum it up, I mean, there might be a few concerns areas that you're worried. I mean, everybody's worried when they're overseas and then probably they want to know if like travel insurance covers like example, medical and personal accident benefits. I mean, does it cover hospitalization expenses when you're sick or injured or how do you know who to call, what to do when such things happen? And also maybe when you're in need, of medical help overseas, okay? So uh, how does a travel insurer know when to provide the coverage or medical evacuation to nearby hospital or even back home? So basically, these are a few factors like also like what Feline and Ryan mentioned, does the travel insurance cover COVID? How much does it cover? And then uh, does it cover pre uh, uh And also travel inconvenience benefits, like what kind of travel inconvenience benefits does it cover? Example, if the flight is delayed, uh, what happened if you lost your personal baggage, uh, personal documents, or even money? So you just want to make sure that when you are purchasing a policy, all these are being covered. You know? And then, of course, uh, premiums is also one consideration. And also, probably, you want to also know, hey, is it easy to claim or not? Uh? Uh, do they always ask for A, B, C documents? So these are probably some of the common concerns lah, when selecting the kind of insurance uh, you want to go for, the kind of uh, policies that you want to go for. Yeah. Thank you, Clara, for shedding a different light and perspective, uh, a more practical sense, you know, what are the things that, you know, we are, you know, the concerns that uh, you guys want to take note of, you know, when you actually come to select your travel insurance. Okay. So, um, so this brings me to my next question. Uh, 
are there really different types of travel insurance in the market? So if there really is, right, you know, how do we know that you know, as a traveler, I'm really choosing the right one for myself which is if there are actually different types in the market? Yeah. So uh, maybe this time, Clara, would you like to ladies first? Man? So, you know, for you. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. maybe your turn. Yeah, your turn. Okay, yeah. all would right. Would you like sure. to come um... first? Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, I mean, different types of travel insurance, like uh, there's a single trip or we call it per trip. Lah. So basically, single trip is like, uh, let's say you go for seven days uh, to Japan. So you just buy for seven days. Okay, or uh, there's such thing as an annual coverage. That means uh, you just buy for whole year covering, uh, selecting a zone, a zone of countries. So uh, that is for individual. That means if you are alone. But of course, if you are talking about family, we also have uh, probably like family plan. So family plan is like uh, with uh, adults and children. So for family plan itself, there's only also per trip, which is like single plan as well as uh, annual plan as well. So uh, mainly, these are the kind of different types of travel coverage in the market right now. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you did mention about family plan. So family plan, uh, what actually constitutes to a family actually? Oh, uh, family plan is like uh, depending. Uh, it can be husband wife. Okay, if it's an annual 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 kind of coverage, so it will be comprising of husband, wife, and children. Okay. okay if let's say if it's family uh, per trip, which is single plan, okay, it can comprise of uh, two adults, which need not be related. Uh, and also it can comprise of uh, any number of children. Okay. So, but they must be kind of legally related lah, to either one of the adult. Ah, so, okay. yeah, correct. So this is some differences in terms of uh, the definition of family plan. Okay, there's something yeah. uh, new to me. Thank you for sharing this, uh, Clara. Um, how about um, the other two, uh, Feline and uh, Ryan, anything else to add on to this? Mm, actually, not very much. I think Clara, she has pretty much summarized uh, very well the different types of travel insurance plans available in the market. Yeah, I don't have anything else to add on. Yeah, I just uh, want to probably add on a little bit is that when it comes to getting a family travel plan, whether annual or not, uh, just be careful about, uh, because different insurers might have different criteria or conditions. Like sometimes the partners can be legally married, or sometimes it, it cannot be, you know, it, like, it has to be like just, uh, it has to be just husband and wife only. But uh, there are others that allows partners to be in part of the family plan. And uh, do also take note of the age limit for children. Because uh, again, insurers vary. Some could be up to age 21, some up to age 23. So be careful about when you add on the kids to your family plan. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's a very important thing to highlight. We can't really just assume that children is uh, anyone below 18 or anyone below 23. Well, some accept 18, yeah. Some only accept 18, yeah. So I think it's very good to check it out uh, before to check out the definition of who's children and what family definition before you know we commit to getting our travel our travel insurance. Yep. Thank you so much for sharing on that. So um no, no, we, we were talking so much about um, you know, uh, the, the different type of plans and all, and we always hear in the market. Oh, this brings me to my new question. Now, we always say in the market, you know, uh, there's annual, there's single trip plans and everything. How different are they actually, you know? And then, you know, as a, as a traveler, how should I actually choose? So let's say, for example, uh, no, how should we actually choose to actually decide, you know, which, should I go for a single or annual? Mm, I think, right, actually when, uh, okay, today when it comes to single trip plans, uh, the concept is similar to like, say you buy a single admission ticket to the Universal Studio. So that means you will only go to the studio once on that day. Yeah, whereas an annual multi-trip plan is like you buy a year pass and then you can go to USS as many times as you want within the year. So that's pretty much what it means by single trip and annual multi-trip. So uh, which one to choose for uh, to, to choose between, it really depends on the frequency of your travel. And most importantly, also the length of each trip. 
yeah so uh because uh why i say that is because uh usually for single trip plans they are more generous in terms of the number of days that you can be traveling in that one single trip and we are talking about say 182 days consecutive yeah, for that one single trip. So that's a really long time. Whereas today, if you're talking about annual multi-trip plan, even though you can make multiple trips within the year as many times as you want, uh, each of the trip, they will have a restriction that it cannot be more than usually is 90 days. Yeah, I can't say for like, it's the same for every single insurer, but that's pretty much the norm. Yeah, so uh, that means when you choose between the two, uh, not only considering your frequency, you also have to consider each trip, usually how long does that actually take you? Very, very good uh, point <laughs> that you actually shared with us uh, on, the, on the duration of the trip actually matters whether it's single or annual. Thank you so much for Lynn. Uh, that, that shed us a lot of light to this. Um, uh, other speakers, any, any, anything to add on? Ryan, anything? Well, I pretty much support what Feli has mentioned. It's always about the number of frequencies and durations. So if you guys are actually planning for travel, if you may, map out your travel plans even for the entire year. So you will have a guesstimate about how many times are you traveling actually. So frequent travelers, you know who you are actually. If you travel maybe once or twice a month or you have a few big trips to America or even to Europe, right? Then perhaps you may want to see an annual cover could be a better option. Besides having an annual travel insurance, it gives you the peace of mind, not like worry about have I forgotten or will I need to remember to buy my travel insurance if you need to rush off to the next destination? Thank you so much. So if I'm a frequent traveler to JB, am I considered a traveler? Yes. Why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. So I get the annual one if I go in every week. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, I understand. Okay. Uh, Clara, anything to share? Um, I think I definitely agree and pretty much same as what Ferlin and Ryan has mentioned. But of course, like you mentioned, JV, I think if you travel in and out of JV, like maybe a few times a month, I think you should buy an annual trip if that's the case because it saves you the trouble to actually accept the policy every time. So uh, frequent in and out of JV, yes, annual trip, definitely. Thank you. I'll yeah. tell that to my colleague. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So thank, thank you so much for sharing. Um, so you all know where my colleague actually goes to every week. Yeah? So uh, maybe let's go to the next um, uh, 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 slide where we would like to do a poll to see, uh, apart from my colleague, you know, where else do you know, our audience here today actually goes to? You know? <laughs> what will be uh, you know, uh, the next destination that you think that you like to travel to? Is it uh, uh, you, me, like me and my colleague in my series in Malaysia? Or uh, somewhere further in Asia, it could be like uh, Ferlin, you can see her in Bangkok. Or uh, Korea, <laughs> Japan, Taiwan, or maybe somewhere in Europe like Milan. Paris kind of things. <laughs> or you have not even planned anything yet. So uh, let's launch this poll. Okay, for our audience to actually uh, see, uh, uh, voice your, your, your interest to see where you actually like to go. We would like to know that, okay? Uh, and also, so these are the posts. And also, please do take note, uh, for those who actually just join us, please do take note that we actually have our giveaway as well. So as you answer this poll, please also do remember that we have our like and share giveaway. What you need to do, if uh, you can actually refer back to our chat, Okay, like and share this live, uh, this Facebook live video, follow our page and comment, like and share. And then there'll be three lucky winners to be selected. So do take part. We'll be doing the lucky spin at the very end of our webinar. So do stay tuned all the way to the end. Okay. So, okay. We are, okay. Uh, what, 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 what? Wait, let me see. Okay. Okay. We have quite a good mix actually. Okay. Uh, I wish I think we are almost done. Are we going to stop the poll? And share the poll, yeah. Okay, so uh, the top lucky winner, uh, the top the top destination is actually you know, uh, somewhere further in Asia. So uh, you guys like to try your luck to meet Ferlin somewhere in Bangkok, Korea, <laughs> Japan, or Taiwan, something like that. Okay, um, Europe, uh, haven't planned. Okay, a lot of you haven't planned yet. Okay, so you know, do take time to take uh this opportunity while knowing about travel insurance to maybe make your travel plans. Uh, the next winner is actually uh, the next top destination is actually Europe. Uh, okay, further away. You like to go further away in Europe? You know, I think maybe because we are so pent up, 
uh, during this, <laughs> these few years, we like to travel further. Uh, okay, the least popular choice is actually to meet me and my colleague in uh, our neighboring country. It's okay. Uh, that's Malaysia. Okay, so okay, we understand where, where you guys would like, like to actually travel, your travel plans and all. So uh, this brings me to the next point, you know, uh, what are the important uh, uh, factors to look out for when we're actually traveling the different, uh, not traveling, sorry. What are the important factors to look out for when, you know, when we, you, know, you, you guys mentioned there's so many different plans out there, you know, what are the things that we actually need to look out for when we compare the different travel, travel insurance plans? Well, if I may start, yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> please. Before, before you start comparing, there's a few things to look out for. You have to be certain on the eligibility of coverage at your destination country. Some country can be a sanctioned nationality, na nations that is not part of the travel cover. And it could be a war-torn zone. So be a lookout of those uh, countries that may not be included in your travel insurance. And then define also your travel duration and the activities you're participating, especially if you're a very active person, always into a little bit more hazardous type of activity, okay? And perhaps understand the cost of medical attention at that foreign country that you're traveling to. Certainly you will want to avoid being underinsured or so, that's very important. So while during comparison, it's important and obvious that Premiums will always be our main factor. Is this cheap, cheapest, the most discounts, et cetera. But important factors to look out for are really non-exhaustive. And if I may share a few viewpoints from, uh, uh, from, uh, from my perspective, then uh, you have to probably look out for reimbursement limits and its conditions for common hiccups. For example, common hiccups like flight delays, flight cancellations, okay, baggage loss or baggage delayed medical attention coverage, emergency evacuation and repatriation benefits, and most importantly, COVID-19 coverage. So what are the benefit limits for each of these important um, so-called uh, benefits and the duration limits, and if there's any sub-limits to any specific items, yeah? So if, you tra if your travel includes activities like diving, bungee jumping, trekking, or even sitting in a hot air balloon, do find out from your insurer in the policy wordings probably, or maybe you can check with uh, a, a weather hotline of the trusted agent, whether it covers them from the height or depth of these activities. Thank you what so about much. You? Yeah. Sorry, please, please, please carry on, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I like to add on to what Ryan just now mentioned about activities. Yeah. So he mentioned about like the high risk hazardous uh, fun activities. So what I want to uh, bring up and highlight is actually another kind of activities that some people, uh, when they travel, they might be doing. And that is like a special purpose trip. Yeah. So say, for example, young couples, if let's say they decide to go overseas to do a wedding photo shoot. Yeah. For the past two years, nobody can do that. That maybe now it might be coming back. Yeah. So in such an event, right, uh, they actually, have to be especially uh, have to be uh, more aware like in terms of uh, how much do they need to get covered for for their personal belongings because for such a trip the things that they will bring along chances is that the total value will actually be higher than like a regular trip so it's important to check in the policy wordings whether or not uh, there is any specific exclusions on wedding related belongings and what is the claim limit is it enough for them and just for additional information purpose, more often than not, insurer unlikely they will cover the full cost of the bridal gown. So to what extent will they actually cover that loss up to? So it's good to know about that in advance before you get a shock in the event of a claim to realize that actually you can't claim the full value of the gown. Yeah, so this is the first thing. And uh, the other additional point that I'd like to bring up will be a pre-existing medical condition. So this is especially important when you're traveling with someone who is older or has a pre-existing medical condition. Yeah, so uh, actually most travel insurances, right, they don't cover, as in the benefits that is in the policy, they will not be paid out if it's, a, a, if let's say the loss or the, uh, or the destruction is as a result of a pre-existing medical condition. So, and that's why for that reason, uh, if you are traveling with someone with a medical condition, it's good to get a travel insurance that covers pre-existing medical conditions specifically. And usually these kind of travel insurances will cost a little bit more than the standard ones in the market. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ryan and Feline. Uh, Ryan, uh, planning away 
the zone, you know, the activity, the events, and you know, Ferdin coming up with very specific special purpose trips that, that we actually need to look out for as well. Uh, how about Kyra? Kyra, uh, and any okay. any <laughs> I think they have covered more or less almost <laughs> everything. <laughs> okay. okay, but I think uh okay, like uh, I just concur with Feline. Uh like example, if you are going out with uh being elderly. So probably got to check whether it covers pre-ex or not. Uh, if it does cover pre-ex itself, it's good for them. If it's not right, you probably really have to purchase something that covers pre-ex for them if they really have existing condition. Okay, like uh, sports activities, which yes, I mean, depending on where you go, what you do. So basically, just got to make sure that the sports activities is being covered in the first place. If it's covered, if it, if it is covered, right, probably got to check what are the uh, limits that it covers. So sometimes probably they only cover um, like example, maybe tracking, let's say. So some insurer probably will specify it covers until uh, 2,000 meters, 4,000 meters and things like that. So just be a bit more uh, careful la, in that. And also, of course, like uh, maybe in terms of uh, personal baggage or like laptop and things like that. So sometimes when you buy that plan, you will see that, oh, uh, personal belongings, the maximum limit is 8,000. So sometimes people were taught that, oh, I can claim the $8,000, you know, everything. If I lost my whole package, it costs more than $8,000, let us say. But uh, just try to take a look at the sublimit. Some, because sometimes uh, they will actually indicate like a uh, laptop, maximum 1,000 only. So mm. it doesn't mean that you can actually claim the whole 8,000 if let's say you buy a very advanced, super good laptop, you know. So these are little, little things that probably... You just need to be a bit careful, lah, in a way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think I hear from the three of, of our very experienced uh, speakers, you know, really depends on the active the event that you're going there for, the companion they're traveling with, you know, is there any specific activities that you're going to do, what other things are going to bring. I think all this comes in play when you actually want to compare the different travel insurance uh, that we're actually getting. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So, um, you know, um, what I'm, so what's actually next? Uh, you guys actually mentioned about, you know, uh, uh, previously uh, uh, that we need to see if plans do cover COVID. You actually mentioned about this. So but what actually do we need to take note of with this benefit? Because I think this is something very new to uh, our, our friends, our friends today, because we have not been traveling for so long. And then, you know, pre-COVID uh, pre and now, I think there are different things to look at. So with specific to COVID, coverage you know what do we really need to uh, what, what 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 do we need to look at mm, okay for okay uh i'll answer this question for a start for covid 19 benefits right actually uh they can be divided into two main categories we can look at it that way the first one will be pre-trip so before the trip happens and the second covid benefits will be for during the trip so for pre-trip we will have things like trip cancellation and postponement which means if you have to cancel or postpone your trip because you or your travel companion, they can't travel because of COVID. Uh, and some insurer, they may have travel re traveler replacement benefit as well as a result of COVID. Yeah, then as for during the trip, uh, some of the common COVID benefits in uh, most policies that we will see will be medical expenses that you incur overseas because of COVID. Uh, the medical evacuation and repatriation if you have to be sent back to Singapore uh, on a medical emergency, the cost of having to shorten your trip uh, and return back to Singapore because of COVID as well, or finally, uh, you have to stay there for a longer time because you have to be quarantined there yeah, for X number of days. So that will usually be a daily quarantine allowance. Yeah. Thank you. I suppose I just add on to what Feline has said. Uh, I think these are mainly the kind of coverage that was that is given in most insurance policies. Okay, another one which I suppose is very, very common, which means that like example, you have planned a trip. I mean, now it's June holiday, right? So you probably have planned a family trip with tour agency, maybe go Japan, okay? So example, let's say during Japan, uh, not, I mean, you haven't even flew out yet. So basically you're in Singapore, then uh, probably... One, you, are, you, you go out with your family with children, then if your children have COVID, let's say, so uh, you probably cannot travel out as well because you need to take care of them, right? So mm. the whole family cannot travel out. So this is when the travel cancellation takes place whereby uh, you can actually claim for it because diagnosed with COVID and then the whole family cannot travel out. So the whole 
family can claim. Lah. So this is uh, something that is pretty common right now because you also don't know whether you will get COVID or not anytime before right. you fly. So this is also one of the worries. Lah. Apart from that, everything that's stated by Berlin is what is being covered right now. Great, yeah. that's very comforting to know <laughs> about right. <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. I, I really concur with both Feline and Clara with what they have mentioned. Uh, these are very, very valuable points mentioned. But please take note of every insurer because their limits are always different mm -hmm. and the benefits may differ as well. And as well, I, I mentioned earlier on, if you are a travel companion and you're not just related by marriage, then you have to check whether insurer covers you and your travel companion then goes down. Yeah, so really be careful about the coverage that you're getting from the insurers. Yeah. Uh, words of wisdom from my experience advisor. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, here, here brings me to the million dollar question. Uh. When I get all this travel insurance and all, uh, how do we claim? You know, uh, how to claim? You know, what do we need to take note when it comes to claiming, you know, for travel insurance? So maybe Ryan, you'd like to go first for this time around. Yeah, honestly, the claim experience part is very important for you when you buy a, a travel insurance itself. And claims, claims, uh, tra claims itself may differ from insurers to insurers. That's the thing. But if I may map out a more general approach when it comes to making a claim, firstly, it's very important that you keep hold of the insurance hotline, store it in your mobile phone, okay? Have it noted off somewhere else, maybe in your, on your uh, the piece of paper in your passport, etc. And do take note of the policy number. Of course, we have NRIC for reference, but just in case, policy number will come in handy as well. So should you need emergency assistance, you can actually call up the insurance hotline immediately. So do note that every insurer has always a cutoff time for claims. So it doesn't mean that when you have a claim, you come back, you can wait for half a year later, then, oh, I remembered I have a claim. So then you file in a claim. It's not something like that. So some claims allows you up to seven days a month from the incident. All right. So it's in best interest to submit your claims as soon as possible. So interestingly, many of my clients are unaware that the number of days that they need to seek medical attention uh, when they return to Singapore may differ from insurance as well. Some may be up to 48 hours, some may be within the, the, the three days itself. Yeah. So do find out from insurers what type of supporting documents is needed for your claim. So it could be in written form or it can be like an email uh, that you are getting from uh, the airlines about your flight delay, uh, police theft report, uh, for example, that you have fought at the country of your destination, and uh, maybe the receipts for lost items and so on. These are your supporting documents that you need to keep hold of. Yep. And to file claims, some insurers may have online portal, which is great, uh, mobile app, which is even better, or perhaps just a simple email address for you to submit your claims. And some may still have a snail mail style where you need to mail your original documents over. While insurers allow you to claim online or even via an app, you may eventually still need to provide them with your original supporting document if necessary. So therefore, do not throw away any original receipts or letters, okay? Thank you, Ryan. Uh, anything to add out, ladies? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, in fact, uh, I like uh, the fact that Ryan brings up uh, about this emergency number. Yeah, to uh, as in the travel insurance uh, emergency hotline number. Yeah, to actually store inside your phone, etc. after you buy the policy. Yeah, so uh, that one is one of the key thing. And uh, But in the event that you don't want to make that phone call or maybe it was uh, it is like a very urgent situation and then you did have time to make a phone call, uh, what I tell some of my clients is that uh, another good practice is actually also to print out the policy wordings. Yeah, so it's a lot of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a few pages, but it's definitely worth it to print out together with your policy certificate, put it, uh, bring it along with you in your hand carry uh, baggage or your bag. Yeah, this is so that in the event of an emergency, if you if you can't make that phone call for whatever reason, you can quickly flip through the document, uh, run to that particular section of the claim that you think that you like you might likely be making. And usually in that document, they will briefly talk about what, what are some of the supporting documents that you have to provide uh, to facilitate the claim. 
Yeah, so this will help you to know what you need. So one example is like, say for example, if there's an event of a theft, right? That's when you have to actually make a police report. So usually the police report, it has to be done with the local police authorities. So let's say if you lost your handphone in Times Square, you have to make a police report in the States. Yeah, you cannot come back to Singapore, make a report with the Singapore police and then expect that that document will be accepted by the insurer. Yeah, so yeah, that's all from me for claims. Good related. to know, good to know. <laughs> Uh, how about Clara? Uh, okay, I mean, if uh, talking about me personally, if I travel out, okay, like what they mentioned, definitely I'll save the number first for the emergency assistance hotline number. Okay, secondly, I'll definitely print a policy, a set of policy wordings, just in case anything happens. So uh, basically, it's very important in terms of the emergency hotline number is because when you're overseas, for example, if let's say due to any accident, uh, 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 road accidents or things like that. So, uh, they will usually bring you to the nearest emergency hospital, of course. So, of course, depending on what kind of uh, what kind of injury you have. So, basically, you have to call the emergency hotline in case they, they, they at least they know what's happening and then they will probably find the nearest another hospital that can help with who has the expertise now in terms of the injury. Mm. Or rather, if let's say the Accident costs maybe a lot of money, maybe uh, 20, 30 over thousand. So sometimes you need to let the hotline know so that they can actually prepare a letter of guarantee, okay, so that uh, you do not need to actually pay the cash first. So definitely all this, uh, you need to actually inform, try to inform the insurer because they will be able to guide you properly, like where to go. And also uh, when you actually tell them the condition, because normally for all these emergency assistance hotline, right? They actually have a team of doctors or nurses. They will be able to monitor the condition. They will be able to see what zone you are in, which region you are in, and then which hospital is the nearest for you and things like that. So uh, I think just keep the hotline. Uh. Just make sure anything, not sure, just call the hotline. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Thank all. you. I hear you. hear you. Uh, if I gather you know, important things that the three of you say, policy wordings, hotline, and keep those receipts. Yep, yes. correct. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, uh, this brings actually, us. Actually, sorry, to just the... to add on. Yeah. Actually, that that, that Please, is yeah. the reason why you buy your travel insurance so that you have a twenty four seven uh support assistant that you can reach out to in the event that you have a travel emergency. Yeah. Yes, yes that's yes, right. Yes. Yep. Words uh, words of experience. Good to know. Okay. Okay. Um. So so now we have come to, um. You know. Uh. Uh. The next slide. We, you know, before we move to our Q&A session, okay, uh, we will actually show you some contact details of our speakers today. Okay, uh, We welcome you to connect with Philip Capital or with any of our financial specialists tonight because all of them have something in common. Uh, they are all very active on social media and they are very generous you know, in sharing and broadcasting value-added financial tips to their customers and followers. Yeah? So you can actually get to uh, just scan their QR codes here actually to get connected with them. Uh, I also have mine here, yeah, but I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> uh, I'm actually from a Philip Capital corporate site doing a recruitment talent acquisition. So if you like to work with me, you can feel free to connect me here. But main, the, main, the main guests are actually here today, the three speakers, okay? If you'd like to connect to them on their social followings and all, they're actually you know, very, very good and very generous in their sharing and all. You can actually connect to them there, okay? Uh, we also have our Facebook page okay do feel free to actually uh, go and give us a like on our facebook page and then this will be the link you can actually scan us uh, scan our qr code and then you know uh, give us a like follow us there and all and uh, as mentioned we are also hiring and expanding so i'm actually from the uh, talent acquisition site so if you'd like to join our family do feel free to reach out to us okay so okay without further ado uh, we will go to our q a session so let me Take a look at our wow, there's a lot. Oh, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Uh, okay, to take uh, okay. Uh, I will, I will. This, as mentioned, this is actually a very casual, you know, uh, chit chat session and all. So maybe let's do one by one. Uh. Let me take a look. Is there any travel insurance for COVID? What happened? Okay, uh, let's do this. Okay, uh, to our speakers, is there travel insurance for COVID? What happens if contracted COVID and put under a quarantine in a foreign country? Does the insurance cover the bills and expenses? Anyone likes to take this? 
Uh, okay, I'll, I'll probably just comment a bit. Okay, for yeah. such, right, normally if you are overseas, so basically there will be something like uh, an, uh, probably an allowance depending on the insurer. So different insurer is different. Uh. So normally there'll be always an allowance that you can claim from. So it covers you for accommodation as well as meal expenses, depending on the number of days that you are being quarantined for. Yeah, so this is one of the star coverage la, of COVID. <laughs> Anyone like to add on to that? If not, mm, yeah. we have quite okay, a number uh, of questions. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what Clara has said. So just to, just to note, actually that quarantine benefit is actually like an allowance per day. Yeah, so uh, ju just to get things straight, because I know like, uh, some people might think that, oh, that means you pay for everything, my, all my expenses, all my bills. No, no, no. Yeah, usually it's like say $100 or $200 per day. So however you spend that money, of course, that's up to you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so it's like more of an allowance instead of a Yes, it's an allowance. Okay, yeah. I understand. Mm. Yeah. So hope we made that clear. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, next question. Uh, let's, okay, maybe let's do this. Um, from Wai Chan, uh, if Sui Sui, can you make multiple claims on a single trip? Like I lost my baggage, then I lost my money, then I got food poisoning, then I hospitalized, <laughs> and then after that, well, I don't know why so sweet. Then after that, the flight delay and all, yeah. So if so sweet, all these things happen, uh, uh, are we Hopefully able to make not a real things? experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how about uh, uh, Ryan? Would you like to take that or? Yeah. Well, honestly. Please refer back to your, your policy itself on the wordings because sometimes the limits itself matters. Yeah, you might not be able to claim the full limit of your baggage, the, uh, the, the, the value stuff, yeah, the monies itself, like there is a limit, some like $500, etc. So please be mindful about what coverage are you getting and what limits are you having in your travel documents, okay? Yeah, that is very important. So I think if you really got all these things, you might try to buy 4D. There's a good chance you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> we really hope that uh, this really didn't happen to you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so 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 that's uh, for that question. Um, yeah, me... but okay, just to add, or just to weigh in this, on that this, as well. Hmm. Yeah, but essentially, right, actually, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, like what Ryan has said, it really depends on the policy, the wordings, the limits, and how they, uh, how should I say how do they impose a whole section limit for related similar claims? So like say, for example, if you lost baggage and money, sometimes they might lump that together as one single, one single thing, one single section. Yeah, so it depends on your plan. Yeah, but usually, of course, uh, sections which are mutually exclusive, like say, for example, we are talking about food poisoning, which is a medical expense, plane delay, which is a travel inconvenience. These are usually considered like different things. Yes, then it's likely possible to claim from plane delay and also your food poisoning and getting hospitalized as a result of that. Yeah. I understand. Thank you. Very clear. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, how about this? Uh, from uh, Yuling, Xu, Xu Yuling. Okay. Uh, trip cancellation is only covered 30 days prior to departure. Is that true? So if there's no benefits to is so if that's true, there's no benefit to buy a travel insurance two to three months before the departure. Is this correct? I think uh you still need to refer to the policy wordings, okay? Because yes, normally before the departure of the trip, we will actually impose like a 30 days. So uh you're kind of right also if you buy like two, three months before that. Uh, if anything happens, okay, if any major things happen, like uh, somebody pass on or things like that, yeah, right, uh, you might not be able to claim. So uh, do read carefully the policy wordings like which, uh, how many days, it can be 30 days, it can be 45 days, it can be 60 days. So just make sure when you are buying that particular company's uh, insurance, just make sure that you take a look to check mm -hmm. how many days is it. Yeah. I understand. So, so it differs from... Insurer to insurer, yeah? Yes. Anyone, anything to add on? Mm, yes, what Clara said is true. Uh, uh, and that's why actually there is value in buying even 30 days uh, before. Yeah, as long as you make sure you read the wordings correctly. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sorry, we are left with five minutes. So maybe I select one which we, we might not have um, covered. Mm. How, uh, I select one or two more. Uh. Uh, how about... Uh, 
for how about for over okay this how about this one this one i think that's good uh no no how about what this uh for overseas from stephen from stephen chu uh for overseas car renter with travel insurance can one decline our car rental insurance No, I don't, I don't agree that you shouldn't buy a car rental insurance uh, when you're overseas renting a car. Our, the usual uh, insurance to, and covered locally from travel insurance to cover your car rentals are usually covering your excess portion. That means if you buy a car rental insurance, say in Australia, and your excess is $1,000, for instance, yeah, and that insurer in Singapore will cover the excess, maybe up to 500 or more. It depends, again, on the policy wordings. So please don't, don't actually assume that you have travel insurance, you don't need a car rental insurance. You do need both. Ken, thank you. Are we able to do one more? Do you guys want to do one more? Correct. Okay, Ken, yeah, I'll I mean, do one more. Uh, okay, yeah. okay uh, maybe just one last one. Okay, uh, from Gillian Lim. Um, should I buy travel insurance before the tour package is confirmed? Like pending the number of people to go because they have not confirmed the tour package. Should we should they actually buy the travel insurance then or after the package is confirmed? I think uh I mean if I'm you, I think I will just buy when the travel package is confirmed. Because sometimes like travel agency, if let's say it's not confirmed, they they will they will not fly, right? I think if I'm not wrong. So and I think I they think, will refund the money, will they? They will refund mm -hmm. the tour package, but uh okay, I mean. If let's say you really want to buy before the tour package is confirmed, yes, you can do, you can go ahead. Uh, if really it's being cancelled, uh, normally the insurance company will refund you the premium as well. As long as mm. you have not started, that means you have not departed lah, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you haven't made any claims. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, but, but then again, read the policy wordings. Yeah. Especially the cancellation clause. Yeah, yep. do they still charge you and then they refund the premium or do they refund a portion or they refund entirely? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Absolutely. Sorry, I think we still have a lot of un unanswered questions, but uh, we are uh, a bit a bit tight on time. So um, maybe uh, you guys have actually taken down, you know, the contact details of uh, Ferlin, Ryan, and even Clara. So if you guys like, you can actually contact them to actually ask for more questions. Um, why don't we actually go to the next uh, session section where, you know, um, we will just wrap up, you know, uh, the key takeaways of uh, this uh, entire session that we have, okay? Uh, it has been you know, a really uh, eye-opener to listen to the three speakers for tonight. I've certainly learned a lot and taken a lot of notes. And uh, hopefully when it's my turn to book my next trip, uh, I can actually put all this to you. So uh, at this juncture, mm -hmm. uh, we would also like to welcome any comments uh, on any kind of topics that you, you know, uh, the audience would actually like to hear next time in our Ask Me Anything series, okay? Because your input is valuable to us. Uh, we are doing all this series right with you in mind. Stars, we actually like to talk about the topics that you would like to hear. Okay, so um, so now let's maybe have our speakers to actually uh, wrap it up by giving some takeaway points from their own experience from buying travel insurance. Uh, for myself, I know that I shouldn't buy last minute and also from, from the q and I also shouldn't buy too early. Yeah, so I will always need to you know uh, time my, my you know, uh, just don't buy the last minute, okay? So um, so there are many things that can actually happen with the, uh, before my trip. So what about the takeaways from our speakers today? Who we'll suffers? <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> okay, the guy will start first. Yep. Uh, yeah, guys first now. Yeah. Well, everyone loves to travel for leisure. It's always fun and exciting. We all know that. Yeah, I'll, I'll never wait till the last minute definitely to purchase a travel insurance because if any unforeseen circumstances occurred before you are insured, you won't be able to make any claims anymore, right? So I'll personally go for higher coverage when travel to places like out of ASEAN region. Yeah, and do identify any hazardous activities. That's very essential, especially when you're young, you're active, and you like to do a lot of dangerous stuff. And ensure that your travel insurance covers them, actually. So lastly, I'm never a firm believer of travel insurance for free. Yeah, for I believe you receive things for free, then you're likely the product itself. Think about it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good one. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's true. Buy a travel insurance the moment you make any sizable payment for your trip. So that usually would be like air ticket or accommodation. Yeah, then uh, and what else? Yeah, so yeah, I mean as uh, as in as, as we would uh, learn tonight that trip cancellation 
uh, it's actually one of the benefit that can uh, cover you even before the trip commence. Yeah, so if let's say you're gonna pay the same premium, whether or not you buy the plan one month before or one day before your trip, then you might as well make the most out of your premium. Yeah, then the next part to consider is definitely the activities that we'll be doing. Who are you traveling with? Do you need pre-ex condition cover? And uh, yeah, and if let's say you're renting a car, ensure that you have sufficient uh, car rental access benefit in the policy. Okay, uh, for me, I think, uh, of course, buying an annual trip is the best because uh, it's like you don't need to insert every time you go overseas. So uh, if there's a bit of budget for it, maybe you can buy an annual trip, then uh, you do not really need to think like, oh, I need to purchase a travel insurance. Uh, of course, if let's say you are going to probably those countries as developing countries or higher crime rates, country I think should buy a higher coverage plan. Okay, and of course, uh, as I mentioned just now, traveling with parents, just be a bit careful. Probably need to buy pre-ex uh, or even yourself if you have any medical conditions. The activities that you are doing, sports activities, just make sure that the insurer covers. And also probably uh, look for some, I mean, as in reliable, the, the insurer got to be reliable, okay, of course. And then uh, reliable travel assistance advice, giving advice. And also, uh, I suppose that's about it. Uh, and also maybe claims, um, just make sure that it's easy to claim, uh, easy to claim, uh, I mean, in terms of submission, procedure, everything. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Great, great. Okay. Um, thank you all. So uh, we have come to the best part of this um, session. Yay, it's the moment that we have been waiting for. It's a time for our Facebook Live like and share giveaway okay so we have three uh lucky winners who will actually walk away today not today like, they will actually get themselves uh, that we've been waiting for is a time for our facebook live like and share giveaway okay so we have three uh lucky winners who will actually walk away today not today like, they will actually get themselves that we've been waiting for is a time for our facebook live like and share giveaway okay so we have three uh, lucky winners who will actually walk away today. Yeah. You will actually get themselves that we've been waiting for. It's a time for our Facebook Live like and share giveaway. Okay, so we have three uh, lucky winners who will actually walk away today. Yeah. You will actually get themselves that we've been waiting for. It's a time for our Facebook Live like okay, and share giveaway. Okay, so we have three uh, lucky winners who will actually walk away today. You actually get them something that we've been using for is a time for Facebook Live. Like okay, our first Facebook Live. So we have three uh, lucky winners who are actually away today. Yeah, you actually get them something that we've been using for is a time for Facebook Live. Like okay, our first Live. So we have three uh, lucky winners who are actually away today. Yeah, you actually get them something that we've been using for is a time for Facebook Live. Okay, so we have our three lucky winners, Warren Tan, Kenji Furuhashi and Celia Tong. Big congratulations uh, to our lucky winners. So if you are the lucky winner, please do drop us a message on our Facebook page, okay, within the next 24 hours to claim your prize. I repeat this again, please do drop us a, a message on our Facebook page to actually claim your prize in the next 24 hours. So, all right, we have come to the end of this session. Uh, and I, I know that I've been keeping saying thank you, thank you to all of our speakers throughout the session, but I really can't express myself more. But to say a big thank you again, okay, to our speakers and to every one of you who actually stayed with us thus far. So do, do join us again on our upcoming, you know, Ask Me Anything episode. I'm your host, Joshua, and see you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night.